All right, everyone, I think we're about ready to get started here. Um, first off, thanks so much for, for being here and joining us for our sixth episode of Line Change with Coach Thomas. Um, this is uh, the third week in a row now where we've had a, a really solid turnout, so we're hoping to keep this going, and uh, we really appreciate you guys coming by and taking time out of your Tuesday night. Um, first thing I'm going to do is sort of recap the weekend. Um, we had a series split with Huntsville on Military Appreciation Weekend. Uh, lots of pretty cool festivities unrelated to hockey, as you guys, I'm sure, saw um, on Friday night with the repelling uh, Army Rangers coming down, and you know, we were all, we were all <laughs> sweating watching that. But, um, and then Saturday night, coming away with a huge two points. Um, Coach, I wanted to talk to you about uh, the implications of getting those two points. Um, it was uh, an enormous win for the Mayhem, who had just come off a, a pretty uh, disappointing third period. It was a tight-knit game on Friday night, uh, all up until the third, where things kind of took a downward spiral pretty quick. Um, talk about the, the adjustment that you and the team made from Friday to Saturday night, especially in terms of the discipline that you guys had. Yeah, that was, uh, that was the main thing. Um, we should have we came away with two points on Friday also, but uh, ran into some penalty trouble. So the main, the main thing for Saturday was let them do all the talking and let's just take care of business on the ice. You know, let's beat them the right way. Let's beat them all over the ice physically, being all over pucks. And um, I think the guys did a good job. Yeah, and for whatever reason, it's been a recurring theme. For the past three, four weeks or so, Friday night, tons of penalty minutes, tons of five-minute majors, some suspensions. Uh, and then the following night, Saturday night has always just been the exact opposite of that. You guys just getting back to the basics and, and playing hockey and coming away with two points. Have you been able to sort of come up with a reason for, for, that, uh, for that trend? Yeah, it's, well, I think it's because of the league. We're sending in videos. The other team's sending in videos. <laughs> guys are getting suspended. So um, I think when you do that and, um, you know, you kind of talk about the ref with the leagues and the head of officiating, it tends to die down for the next game. And, um, but again, I think Saturday was just a well fought. Both teams played really well. It wasn't um, too much of a crazy game or or bad things going on out there slashing and stuff like that. So it was just a hard fought playoff uh, type game, and um, the ref kept his whistle in his pocket, so it was good. Coach, the uh, gentleman sitting to your right, Stathis Sumalitas, had an enormous weekend in his first couple games back from the ECHL. Uh, a goal, three assists, 14 penalty minutes. Um, <laughs> could you could you have could, could, could you have pictured a more Stathis-like return to action than we no, saw? Man. <laughs> that's why this guy's here. You know, that's, I, I played with this guy. I've known this guy for a long time. So um, I, know he, I know what he brings to our team, and that's one thing we were definitely missing here for the last month or so. And, um, he came back and, and proved me right. You know, he came back and stuck up for his teammates, played, played great hockey for uh, the whole weekend, and and, and does, did what he does. <laughs> he certainly did. Um, so, Stathis, speaking of that huge weekend, um, you were all over the score sheet. Uh, you scored a goal in your first game back after missing 19 when you were in the ECHL. Um, the week beforehand, did you envision something like that happening? Did you, did you have a feeling you were going to come back with a bang the way you did? Uh, yeah, especially because I knew that uh, it was the last... Uh, two home games before the playoffs. And uh, so, yeah, I knew it probably for a while that I'll be back. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it was pretty exciting uh, when I got back on uh, th Wednesday and had a practice uh, with all the guys on, uh, on Thursday. And then so uh, it was a lot of fun, yeah. And uh, when you were in the coast, you were with Florida, the Florida Everblades for a while. You were with the Norfolk Admirals for a while. Um, but you told me that you kept tabs on the guys down here. You kept in contact with them uh, the whole time for the most part. Um, what were some of the things over the course of the two months or so that you were gone that you missed most about playing in Macon? Uh, probably probably uh, the fans especially because uh, I've been, last three years I've been playing in Macon and then uh, I feel like every year uh, the fan base is getting uh, better and better. And... Uh, it's always uh, wherever I'm gonna end up playing. It's always uh, it's always feel, always feels like uh, like home playing in front of Macon's uh, crowd, and then uh, also the guys too, because uh, especially the guys that I've been playing here with uh, for those three years, uh, 
we all have a good bond and and uh, it's always uh, not as uh, not as much fun when you uh, when you uh, have to travel and pack your stuff and you know you have to get to know uh, all the new guys in the new team and then uh, you get traded and you have to do all of, you know all that all over again so yeah I was pretty excited to go back and see all the guys yeah well, I think that showed um, you and, and Jake Trask and Caleb Cameron you guys just meshed uh, extremely well especially Saturday night. It felt like there were just so many scoring chances coming from uh, the three of you, and it was a lot of fun to watch and even more fun to broadcast. <laughs> um, all right, Blair, I'm going to address the next question to you. Um, as we've all seen, there has been a lot of uh, you know, roster turnover recently, a lot of transactions, players coming and going, that revolving door. Um, talk about uh, some of the, the challenges that have stemmed from that, and also tell us about uh, the decision to bring in Today's acquisitions, which in case you folks haven't seen, it's, uh, it's uh, Marcus Ortiz from the Knoxville Ice Bears and then Kevin Entma, a goaltender from Adrian College. I'll tell you, it's been like Grand Central Station down there. I went in Leo's office this morning and we just started laughing. We're like, man, this is crazy, just people coming and going. But we're just constantly trying to get better and make this team better. Obviously, we saw that we hit a slump and we knew some things needed to change. And opportunities presented themselves at the trade deadline to acquire Danny Caesar, who you know, for his first weekend back after being off the ice for about a month, I think he did really well getting his legs back up under him. And then uh, bringing in Kevin Intima, did I say it right? Entma, yeah. I Entma, think. Something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I picked him up yesterday. Um, <clears throat> creating competition is a great thing. I can tell you in practice when we bring in, you know, when Jake came back and Stathis came back, and we bring in a couple college kids, People start looking around and they start doing numbers in their head uh, and they start going, oh crap, I got to fight for my job, got to work a little harder. And competition's a good thing. Um, with Marcus Ortiz, uh, this is a kid that uh, Leo can talk on a little bit more, but I've been very high on him for the past two years. Uh, I think he's a great kid. He's a leader. He was the assistant captain in uh, Knoxville. Um, he has no problems dropping the mitts when he needs to uh, to stand up for his teammates. He's a goal scorer, he's just, he's a grinder, and he's what uh, we really needed right now. And when we saw his name pop up on the waiver wire, we I immediately called Leo, and I was like, uh, Leo, uh, did you old. see this? He's <laughs> like, I'm already on top of it, man. So, um, you yeah, know, that was huge. And then, you know, with Kevin, bringing in another goaltender, creating uh, that competition there to push Tanner and, and he and to play better, um, you know, we'll see who wins a job. And they, they all know they got to fight for a job right now and play to the best of their ability. Absolutely. Nothing's a given, especially when you, you get to the professional level. And, um, folks, uh, you guys are all going to get a chance to ask questions in uh, just a second. I've got uh, one last question for, for Blair. Um, season ticket holders – or, excuse me, season tickets have gone on sale for next season. Um, the, uh, the last day – uh, to put your deposit down is March 29th, if I'm not mistaken. Um, just talk about some of the, the benefits that uh, stem from, from season tickets uh, going forward for next season. Yeah, some of the benefits, uh, one of the things we're talking about right now um, is introducing a season ticket holder party. Um, one of the things that we've heard from season ticket holders is they don't have the chance to interact with the players as much as they would like. Um, so we're definitely looking at that right now. Um, but they get, you know, the same benefits they had last year, 10% off merchandise, uh, $75 uh, parking pass for the whole year, which is $2.50 a game. Um, you get your first two playoff games for free uh, if you renew by the March deadline. Um, so that will be included next year. If you renew by the deadline this year, then you get your two uh, playoff tickets for free this year. Um, there's a couple more that I'm blanking on, but uh, – there was uh, the, the gifts. I know there was a little bit of a delay on the gifts this week, but they're here, and I know some people picked them up, and then the next one will be here in uh, two weeks. So they'll get the gifts as well. Uh, but we're trying to make it more inclusive, uh, more interactive, and uh, more fan-friendly fan uh, this upcoming year. Absolutely. Uh, from, from what I've seen, it looks like it's going to be the most inclusive uh, season ticket holder package in team history next year. So we're look, I'm sure there's uh, plenty of season ticket holders in this room, and we very much look forward to having you guys back in the fold for next season. Um, that's all the questions I have. Um, the floor is uh, now yours. We've got a, a mic that, uh, that DJ here is going to pass to whoever's got the first question. From that point on, you guys can, uh, if you would, just sort of pass the mic amongst yourselves. Uh, please do just be sure to speak into it as we're recording this for our, uh, for our archive on YouTube. 
Uh, some people may know this, but I don't. Can you carry more players into the playoffs than you can keep on the roster in the regular season? No, I still have to carry the 19 guys in, in playoffs. So I'm at 18 now um, on the roster, but then I have an ATO. So I still have Lynch is still on an amateur. And I just signed Kevin the goalie on an amateur. So. Uh, with uh, Horowitz out, is Bronsberg healthy enough to play, or is his shoulder still? Yeah, no, he, he looked good Saturday, too. He took a couple bumps also, so I think he's, he's good enough to play. I mean, if he takes a pretty, pretty tough hit or slides into the boards the wrong way, I'm sure it's going to hurt a bit. But um, from when I talked to him after the game, it felt, felt fine enough where he could continue to play. So um, he'll be playing defense until... <laughs> Further notice. I was going to say, is that your plan now? <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is for status. We have a little closer relationship with some of the players and a lot of these people. But ever since you left, some of the guys were really looking up to you as that captain in that locker room. And since you've come back, look, we've seen a big difference already. I just want to say we're glad to have you back, Stathis. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate that. Yeah, and just as a reminder, if anyone's got comments just like that, you're welcome to voice a comment as well. It's not just questions. And or complaints. Complaints, too. And um, I want the coach with this one. Uh, and uh, Contrasting the referee in both nights. 43 minutes on all those infractions on this Friday, and then we got three infractions for six minutes on Saturday. I know, I mean, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, how it's, do you explain it's, it's, that? It's been like that all year, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, some games are crazy like that. And, um, you know, I, I want those games where there's only six penalty minutes. You know, I want the guys, especially now at this part of the season, it's getting close to the playoffs. Just let us play, you know? Call the ones that need to be called, but... You know, we're, we're trying to rev up here and get prepared for playoffs, so. But, yeah, and there, well, those were calls that should have been made, too, I think. I, I think one of the inter interference was a little shaky, but um, a lot better than Friday night for sure, though. <laughs> now, I'll follow up with that. I had a call that me and Leo did with the head of officiating after the game Friday night. And I think you'll start to see the officiating more like Saturday night. Here we're going towards the playoffs. They let a little bit more go. They're going to let the guys play. They, they know that we're fighting uh, for a playoff positioning. So I think you'll start to see uh, more games like Saturday night going forward. Um, this question goes for Blair and uh, Coach Thomas. Um, what things popped out to you guys specifically when turning on the tape on Kevin Itma? On Itma? Um well, I talked to Sean Skelly. So some people might know him who, who played here before. Um, I saw one game, actually. I didn't get to see a lot of video on him, but I got a lot of feedback from people in college about this kid and um, kind of where we're at goaltending-wise. It was just a wise move to bring in the kid, maybe not even for this year, but for next year, maybe. So um, I'm at least going to give him a shot. He's going to get some games in. and. Um, he definitely has the opportunity to win a job here, though. So, and I will say he did play over Dylan Kelly from Fayetteville um, at Adrian. Dylan's from there, um, and he was the starter over Dylan. So he had a lot better numbers. I shouldn't say a lot better, but he had better numbers than Dylan. So uh, we think he's going to be a pretty competitive goalie. And he was also on his way to the East Coast, and that kind of fell through. So for him to call me back and that was the first SPHL team he called was was huge so he wanted to be here and he understood he he could possibly win a job so I think that was the main thing for him too he didn't want to come to a spot where he might be here for a week or you know what I mean so and he does understand that he cannot go to the east coast the rest of this year yes yeah he does know that <laughs> Kind of in that same vein, um, seeing as all the playoff spots are locked up, there's still a lot of movement in between like the top three maybe and the, kind of the rest of the field. But given the way that playoffs are with the challenge round and you kind of have 
where it's like if you finish fifth or eighth, it doesn't really make a difference. Right. Do you see that then as an opportunity to get uh, more guys who you're trying to get an eye on, uh, more playing time, or uh, do, you, do you change the way that you set lineups each game uh, based on kind of how things shake out in the next game or two? Uh, not really. I think the last few games um, I kind of t- tweaked with some lines just – because just to see how certain guys were going to play with another guy like Josh, I kept out of the lineup Friday, or yeah, kept out of the lineup Friday, um, you know, and then put Sadi back in um, just to try to get a gauge of what my lines may look like in playoffs. I still got to make moves, so um, I still got a lot of tough decisions to make. Um, so that's pretty much the main thing. The standings don't really dictate that, you know what I mean? I just, I'm trying to do it more for when we're in playoffs and trying to get a feel of how our lineup should be or, you know, you look at those top three or four teams, there, there's no really big, heavy, tough guy who's going to be fighting, you know what I mean? So um, just trying to get a gauge on, on stuff like that. Don't be shy, guys. <laughs> Dathis, can you say making mayhem in six languages? <laughs> can you say it in the six languages? I think it's uh it's it would be the same in every language. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Just say mayhem then. <laughs> so Stathis, what was the difference between playing in the ECHL and the SPHL that you saw? The biggest difference? Uh, probably just uh, a lot of stuff. Uh, there wasn't a big difference. There was the biggest difference was uh, see the guys, that, especially that uh, are on the NHL contracts or AHL contracts, the stuff they do off the ice and uh, uh, how they prepare themselves for the games and uh, and game game wise uh, was pretty much the same thing. Everybody just uh, everybody are. They're a little bit faster. They move the puck a little bit faster. But other than that, there is a, I wouldn't say there is a, that big of a difference. Well, following up on that, uh, compare and contrast. Um, can, yeah. What aspects of your game have you been able to improve since coming back from the Coastal? Uh, probably speed. Uh, or, I don't know, that's, uh, yeah, probably speed. And then, uh, I don't know. I don't think that I improved that much. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think he did get faster, though, for sure. He, yeah. he was flying this weekend. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can, can you say it again? What, what did you, what, is there anything that you learned up there that you brought back here? Like, the way they prepared, uh, anything like that? Uh, not really. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm just, just, I don't know. It's the same thing for me. It doesn't matter what level I'm, uh, I'm at. I'm just doing the same thing, my own thing, and I'm just focused on uh, doing my own. And um, what's the craziest prank that's ever been pulled on you in the locker room? <laughs> I, I don't think that anybody uh, pranked me or anything this year. They're all scared you, of I'm, you, huh? I'm, tell, I'm telling you, there's no, it's crazy. There's no pranksters. Like, I played this game for so long, and when I played, like, there was 10, 12 pranks a day pretty much I, going on. There. Actually, I think uh, Ryan Michael, our system coach, does the most of the pranks in the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's crazy. I could see that. Most of you guys missed the week that uh, Ronsberg, Seth Ronsberg was here. I think he was telling me that he actually jams bubble gum into people's gloves. Yeah. I wouldn't appreciate that one. Not chewed. <laughs> Thank you.
this is for Stathis. When you were here before, you were a gentle giant. But when you came back, you came back as a real scrapper. What happened? <laughs> gentle giant. I mean, you got thrown out of the game. <laughs> I don't know. I just I feel like every time against this team, uh, we uh, most of the scrums or fights are against this team every year, and then uh, I don't know why is that, but uh, I I remember last year the, the the team brawl we had against them. Oh yeah. yeah. And then and uh, <laughs> I feel like every time we play against this team, there's something going on, and uh, I don't think that's gonna be like that against the other teams. <laughs> was that the running off the ice incident we had? What's that? Was that when uh, you ran off the ice? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My question is uh, for Blair. Um, you actually got to coach in a game earlier this year, which huh. I imagine was probably a kind of interesting experience. Uh, could you tell us more about what that was like, uh, being a, the head coach for a game? Uh, scared to death. <laughs> I, w I will say this, being out there, I have a whole new level of respect. Not that I ever had a lack of it, but just being out there, the game speed, calling out lines, having to make those split-second decisions constantly, you know, who's going out, who messed up, uh, who do we need to put out, just talking to mics the whole time. It was pretty wild. Um, I was so frustrated we lost that game because it was such a close competitive game. But it was uh, something I've always wanted to do and something that I'll definitely behold. Larry said you did a good job. Huh? Larry said you did a good job, so there's that. Who's it? Larry, Larry did? Larry did, yeah. Oh, yeah so episode three. four, I think. And this one's for Coach, and I know he's going to get tired of me asking this every week. It's all right. But um, 20 shots or so on goal, is that going to be enough to carry us through the playoffs? 20 shots? Um, it, could, it could. I mean, it could. That's, that's kind of how that game was. I mean, um, I think in playoffs also, it's – going to be tight defensive battles like that so um, I think we only gave up 20 also or something that game so I mean um, you'll probably see more games like that for sure leading in the playoffs so I'll take I'll take 20 rather than giving up 40 so How much of a penalty is it for accidentally boarding a ref? For what? <laughs> Doing what to a ref? Boarding. 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 Them. Depends on how. Uh... Yeah, no, I don't want any of my guys <laughs> doing that. I need my players. That's like a <laughs> lifetime ban, probably. So. We, we've had enough suspensions I, this year. <laughs> nah, I don't know. <laughs> I can't. I can't have my players doing that for sure. <laughs> All right. Anything else, guys? Yes, sir. This one's more for Blair. The players come and share what they know about the team and stuff. But from the organizational level, is there anything you can you can tell us about the future of the organization here? I mean, we know there's only one year left on the five-year deal. Is there any progress being made on extending that? Um, all I can say right now is that we are currently in negotiations with the arena. Um, we're working towards that. Um, you know. The first, uh, going back a little bit, the first year we took a little dip from the first into the second year, but from then uh, we've been steadily growing. Uh, Bob's really happy here. He loves the fan base. And uh, we want to be here long term. We do know that. So we're going to try to knock out this extension and hopefully be here for another five years, ten years or more. Yes, sir. David Aiello, yes, sir. You know, he is. Um, <laughs> I will say, I, I know a lot of people saw in the news prior to Spectre coming that we didn't have a be the best relationship with Spectre. Um, funny story, they brought in the same GM we had in Augusta. Me and Bob looked at each other and just went, oh, crap. And, um, you know, he left, went to Birmingham, and they brought in Dave Aiello. Wasn't sure how he was going to work out at first. 
Um, but he's been tremendous. Um, I know Sean met with him and me one day, and, you know, I think he's very receptive to ideas um, and improving. We know that there's things every game that need to improve. We obviously, I would love for everybody to go up to the concessions and uh, have 30-second interaction there and be back in their seat. You know, we're working on that, and I know there were some issues this past game, but every time he tries to make sure it gets better and better, and he brings ideas to me. Um, like, he, you know, we're trying to figure out how to do, like, a happy hour for season ticket holders properly uh, to get you all in there, have a little bit more benefits. So, and that was one of the things. He worked for uh, UMass Lowell. I don't know if you're familiar with them. They're a D1 school. They went from having very bad attendance to selling out under his leadership, and he's been, uh, he's been helping us. He knows that more people in the building is good for us, it's good for them, it's good for the city. It's, it's a win-win-win. But way back. Uh huh. You never mentioned me and him when he was talking about all these upgrades to the Central. I didn't see that. What was it about? Was it a, when the basketball was there? Yeah. Oh, okay. It was all about basketball. That was Actually, um, the. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'll get on to him about that, but. <laughs> I will tell you that the lights and sound were by our request. They, we, we got put in front of some other stuff. Um, obviously, they bought a new basketball court, but the lights and sound uh, were by our request, and you'll see new dashers and glass. We're hoping uh, mid, sometime in the next year, fiscal year. I can talk about it. <laughs> Two butts in the seats. Um, I oversee it um, with our staff. Um, we also have an outside marketing firm that we work with that we pay a fee each month to. Um, we have tried, I think, everything in the book, and uh, we just keep trying. The one thing that I found is you can market yourself to death as much as you want, but if you don't have the people in the front office making the calls and following up and making that effort, you're just throwing money away. Um, we've made a lot of staff changes. I know you've seen a lot of turnover in our front office, and I think I finally got a good staff that works hard, makes their phone calls, uh, and is doing a good job of getting people in the seats. Our Saturdays are really up from where they've been in the past, and going forward, it's going to be focused on Fridays. We've got our Saturdays figured out. Let's start working on Fridays. The season ticket up, coming in entrance. Yes, down, I heard about that on. It's been down for six games at least. Okay. More. Okay, that was supposed to be something for us to where we don't have to wait in line for everything. Mm -hmm. Why can't they do something simple like that? Is it just that they don't want to pay an employee to be out there? Um, I'm not sure about that. That's a good question. Um, I know I fuss at him every time. Uh, Dave said that they're going to get it handled. I went to him this past. I wasn't at the game Saturday. Um, was at a funeral I had to be at, but um, I got calls all night, and that was one of the things that was brought up, so I reached out to Dave, and it will be fixed by the next game going forward. And then, simple thing, scoreboard to our right mm -hmm. the, 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 for the home. The one mm -hmm. don't work. How, how, how come they can't fix something simple like that? Again, this is not y'all. I know no, yeah. somebody's got to get on their butts about this. Uh, no, we talk about it, obviously. And I know that they're coming in to look at it again. They fixed that scoreboard. If you're talking about when you're walking into the arena, the one on the far end. Yeah, far. If you're coming in. Like above far, the suites. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That one, they replaced the lights in three times this year. The uh, simple thing is they don't want to hear this, but we need new scoreboards. Yeah. It's, it's as simple as that. They, they're old. They're antiquated. And it's just impossible to keep them up. They have, every time the light goes out, they have to bring in a boom truck, order the lights it's special from uh, Dactronics, and it's a process. And the last thing is turn the music down. Oh. Jesus oh. Christ. You tell I, these guys. I they can't, love we, it. We need, I, I know, but. We need you know, to hear the music. We can't even talk. <laughs> I'll send that on to the sound guy for sure. The city. Spectre's contract with the city goes 
I want to say three, they got four more years, so three years past our current contract. Um, I wouldn't say that they're terrible. I, I know from y'all's perspective, if you go to Peoria uh, and other companies, it, it's... Here, I gotta think about how not to get in trouble here. <laughs> um, there's other management companies out there like SMG, like Peoria, Pensacola battles with. Bob had to deal with them. They came in, they jacked their rent up from three thousand dollars a night to seven thousand. Um, they're just a terrible company. And then you have cities that run it, which we saw how the city handled. Not to talk bad about making, but the people they had in running the centerplex before. Spectre came in, uh, it was, it was terrible. You talking about for concessions? Oh, if you knew how much I've talked about concessions, so I'm blue in the face and Bob and me and Dave, we've all sat down. Um, that's definitely something they've been working on. I don't know. From a fan's perspective, it's gotten better. Uh, this year, they brought in all new staff, uh, trained all new staff, and they've, they're trying, they understand the frustrations, because they get it a lot from fans too. And obviously, you know, like me and Dave talk about, if a fan comes to a game, they have a bad experience at concessions. It's, it's not necessarily Spectre's fault in the fans' eyes sometimes, it's I went to a Mayhem game, I had a bad experience, I'm not going back. And so me and David talked about that and he understands the sense of urgency and it's, uh, there's a lot of things that need to be done. Uh, we need proper kitchen equipment, for example. Uh, they don't have a full kitchen right now because long story short, when the two split up, the convention center got the kitchen, so they really don't have the proper qu kitchen equipment to handle, and it's getting money from the city to be able to handle this rush. You follow me? It's, it's like this domino effect every time we talk. It's just one thing leads to another. I will tell you it's in the capital improvements um, to get done here really soon because it affects not only us. Live Nation's a big, a big concert booker. Um, AEG, you know, they look for these things, so it hurts all the way around. And the city understands that. The seat Nazis. Who, who's? To, to check tickets? Yes. Uh, well, one thing I stress was, sadly in this world, we have people that want to cheat the system. I'm not sure exactly where you sit, but I, we have a lot of people that'll buy kids' tickets or they'll buy uh, the cheapest ticket they can and then run down there and sit on the glass. And frankly, it bothers me because if you're a season ticket holder buying glass seats, you shouldn't be paying what you pay for them to pay $8 just to come cheat the system. So I've stressed them checking tickets. Um, I didn't realize it was the same people over and over, but I've had them, told them I want them to spot check. I, don't, I want to make sure that adults aren't buying children's tickets. Because it, it messes with our revenue, obviously. Uh, Coach, could you offer an update on uh, Bezovics? What's that? Sorry. Bezovics. Could Bezovics? you offer an yeah. Um, yeah, he's, he gets off on the 30th. So he's just getting his treatment done on his knee. Um, this is a pretty good strain, so, um, but I, I, he should be back for sure by the 30th when he's eligible to get off. Yeah, yeah. All right. Any last questions, guys? Looks like Go we've for got it. one more over here. I hear you. Uh, yep. Yep. <laughs> so
so yeah um, so yes that's been a point of contention for me because not only is it dangerous for y'all but when somebody's walking down the stairs and just you know zippity doo da day with two beers in their hand and a puck comes flying and hits them in the head because they're not watching then we got major problems um, I've uh, I've talked to them we're going to be getting stop signs um, that'll that they're supposed to hold up and hopefully fans will understand and they're going to have to tell people to stop and wait while the puck's going to play. Huh? Yeah, that will be. <laughs> we can make it happen. <laughs> you got any other questions, guys? Any anytime y'all have um, problems like that, let me know. So I go straight to the GM, and he's uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, one of the things I stress is during a game I have so much going on. I know some people don't think that I do, but I'm constantly you know if I'm watching for a player to get injured, if a player gets injured, I gotta go fill out a report. I gotta go check on them. I'm dealing with arena issues. This light bulb's out on the green light. Uh, So-and-so almost got in a fight over here. Can you send the cops over here because they're throwing beer cans? But anytime that stuff's happening, let me know. Uh, You can email me, call me at the office. I'll make sure to address it in my weekly meeting with Dave. Um, Because a lot of times I don't know about it, and I can't fix it, but I'll definitely bring that up. Because it is aggravating. You pay for your seat, and I understand that. Uh, We'll get people moving along. I know, yeah, I know exactly where you are. Time, People in front of you stand have, up. No, we have to go find our own chairs because the chairs are gone. I believe, wasn't that something we talked about, Sean? That, I mean, there's a little bit of a disconnect where the upper staff isn't finding out about that. And so us alerting them and letting them know so it flows downhill, so it doesn't just stop with... The usher, okay, I'll bring you seats. I forgot to do it. And then just, you know what I mean? Go stand over there. And I'll address it with our staff, uh, even going forward, just taking that extra step and making sure that, hey, we know that the Joneses sit here. Let's make sure that their seats are here before doors open. And, And that way we avoid any problems. So... All right, guys. Well, we appreciate your questions. Uh, We appreciate your comments. Um, We're going to transition now to the last part of the show. We're going to preview the upcoming weekend. Um, Team's headed down to Pensacola on Thursday morning, uh, 7 a.m. trip. Isn't that right, Coach? You guys are getting on the bus. Yeah, I'll get down there a little early, Mm -hmm. uh, practice there at 12, 1 o'clock, and then probably take these guys out to the beach there and go have some dinner, have a team dinner um, on that private island kind of thing. So it should be a good trip. Yeah, that's Sorry, uh, I'm rubbing it. uh, (laughs) (laughs) Right around spring break time, too. Perfect. All right, uh, two more questions for you, Coach. First one is uh, Marcus Ortiz coming aboard. That's a big acquisition for the team. Uh, He actually played on a line with Danny Caesar up in Knoxville for a a good long while this season. Any chance we see the two of them reunited down in Pensacola this weekend? Um, Right now, I would say no, but... Um, you never know what can happen. Things, uh, like I said, I'll probably be mixing and matching um, lines down the stretcher. Um, but I like what I see with Caesar and Seamer and um, either Suddy or Cope. So, um, but it could change. I, I know they're they're familiar. They played together for a couple of years, so it might make sense to do that um, in playoffs or closer to the playoffs. Well, I told you how upset I am with you that you put Seamer and Caesar on the same line. From a broadcasting perspective, it's a nightmare. Seem- basically the same name. Say Seamser or something. Se- Seamser. Seamser, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Almost the same name or same pronunciation, at least. Yeah, um, they, sorry, they're they about the same height. They both shoot right. They're one digit apart from each other on the numbers. I did Brutal. that on purpose, though. Yeah. I had to keep no. you on your toes, man. I figured as much. Yeah. But Hey, Alex. <laughs> Alex, quick question for you. How excited were you, because they didn't get to listen, how excited were you when Stathis scored the other night 
You actually can uh, listen to that call. Um, we posted a... We, <laughs> sorry, Blair. <laughs> Brian, Brian made like a 15-second clip of him scoring. It's uh, on our social media. I, I think I shouted, welcome back to MacTown staff is something along those lines. So, that was a good one. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good question, though. Um, nobody ever asked me questions, so I appreciate that. Well, I wanted to include you, buddy. Yeah. All right, uh, Coach, last question for you. Um, that team down in Pensacola, they've been, they're probably the hottest team in the SPHL right now. They've got nine or points in nine straight games. They've won eight of those. Um, I'm sure you've, you've been you know, researching and scouting them for quite a while now uh, over that span. What threats does that team pose when you guys head down there? Um, they're very good in all three zones. Um, they're a team that they're disciplined also. Um, you know, watching video today, um, they remind me of like a Knoxville kind of team too. They got speed. They got the big bodies that can actually move too, kind of like this guy beside me. So. Um, I don't know, it's going to take the same kind of effort, obviously, that we, we had here at home against Huntsville. And, um, I know we can beat them. They're, they're beatable. Um, but no, I'm definitely, like I said last week here, every game from now on is a playoff game. It's going to be a battle just like Saturday night. Um, it's just all about executing and, and working hard. And, um, we can play with any team in this league. Um, I think Sumi knows that. I think all of our team know, knows that. So... Um, I think we'll, we'll be fine. Yeah, and he's not just saying that. Every game from now on will be essentially a playoff game because every team left on the calendar is a, is a, has already clinched a playoff berth. So, or if not clinched, they're almost certainly going to the play. They have clinched. Isn't that right, Sean? Yeah. So um, there won't be an easy game left on the, on the uh, calendar for the rest of the season. We're looking forward to it. It should be a great few couple of tests coming up uh, next weekend. And the following weekend, we've got a home-and-home -home series with Knoxville. And then uh, we'll close the, series, the season out in Peoria on April 5th and 6th. Um, so the last question I have, just like we did last weekend, um, we got you guys involved at the very end. We had a, a giveaway puck for whoever could answer a trivia question. Uh, last, last line changes trivia question actually wasn't accurate. I thought Caleb and, and Derek Sutliff, I thought their birthday was the same day. But that was... Yeah, <laughs> oh, they were three days apart from each other. I think Cam's, uh, Cam's Elite Prospects was off by a few days. But um, this one I know for a fact to be true, so whoever can get this trivia question correct will get a, an autographed puck from Stathis here. Um, no using your phones either. No using your phones. I'll be on the lookout for it. The question is this. Who can spell Stathis Sumalitis' last name? Give it a try. Yes, Correct. First try. <laughs> Let's give a round of applause for that, eh?